Okay guys, for today's workout, we have five rounds of the following movements. We're starting off with 35 double unders. Um, if you guys don't have a skipping rope, you can do the double tap hops or even just single tap hops, totally fine. Even jumping jacks would be okay on this one. And then you're gonna go for 20 alternating dumbbell snatches. So you're gonna need a dumbbell or kettlebell with that. Then you're gonna go for 35 more double unders and then 20 alternating jumping lunges. So for the alternating dumbbell snatches, pick a weight where you can do all 20 unbroken, especially in the first round. After that, you might get a little bit tired, you might need a little bit of a break. Uh, so you might wanna break it up maybe round two or even three into 10, take a quick breather, 10 more. For the alternating jumping lunges, those are definitely leg burners. So the lactic acid is gonna be building up in those legs. You're gonna start feeling really heavy on those. Um, just remember to prioritize landing right so you're on your heel on that lead leg, not on your toes. Um, and make sure with those ones as well, when you feel that lactic acid, try to get a couple more reps in and then when you need to stop, shake your legs out before you get back into the next set of reps. Um, all together, this workout is a lot of cardio, a lot of leg endurance. Um, you should be looking at somewhere around 20 minutes. You might be a little bit less than that, maybe a little bit more than that, but you don't want to be too carried away uh, beyond that 20 minute mark. Um, so definitely good cardio and leg burn coming your way today in the workout. For our afterburner, we're going to cool down with some stretching. So we're starting off with a pigeon stretch, amazing stretch, really good for the glutes and hips, uh, tight areas for a lot of people, especially if you spend a lot of time sitting down, um, one of our classic favorites. After that, we're gonna go for 60 seconds of glute hip stretching slash strengthening. So you're basically gonna be, uh, we're gonna get your glutes and hips in positions where you're stretching a little bit and then you're activating, and that's gonna help you with that joint mobilization, um, especially with, uh, after today's workout with all that leg burn. Enjoy today's workout, guys. We will see you next in the warm-up. All right, guys, so we're here for that warm-up. We're gonna start off with some quick uh, joint mobility for those uh, ankles. So we're gonna do some lateral uh, ankle tilts. So you're gonna stand uh, in that hip width stance, then you're gonna put that foot forward that you're gonna go for those tilts with. You're gonna stay nice and tall, look straight ahead, and then you're gonna roll that ankle out to the side, so in that lateral direction really slowly with um, a nice glow to it so make sure it's not really choppy um, i don't want you guys going way too fast out to the side really try to focus on the ankle joint rolling up to the side and then back in again we're going to do five on one side then switch your stance do five on the opposite side again go nice and slow looking straight ahead and staying tall then we're going to go into medial tilt, so we're going to roll that ankle inwards this time. We're going to go into a wide stance here, bend the knees a little bit, and we're going to roll that ankle inwards, then back to that center position. We're going to go five again with that left leg, and then switch five on that opposite side. So again, focus here is really trying to move that ankle inwards with the medial tilt and the lateral tilt. We're trying to push that ankle out to the side as much as after that guys, we're going to get into that uh, warm up, so we're going into three sets here. We're starting off with a uh, quick little complex 6 and 6 Spider-Man lunges plus a side kick through. So kind of from that animal flow you might have followed yesterday, uh, that's one of the moves you'll see there guys. We're going to start in our push up position, we're going to bring our foot forward into that um, lunge position here, we're going to drop that elbow down feeling that stretch, then we're going to bring that foot back, then we're going to lift that one leg up, get that foot through, making sure that elbow is locked out, my hips are all the way open, my foot is out, bring that foot back into the center position, and we can do the opposite side, so bring that foot to that Spider-Man lunge, back here, then we're going to roll out to the side, hips open, then back to that neutral position. So six total on, or sorry, six per side here. Once you're done that, find yourself um, a weight or two weights here. You're gonna go for some single-legged uh, deadlifts with a fly at the end, so uh, arm fly there. We're gonna really try to get to a position we feel stable before we do that fly. So we're gonna come down nice and slow. 
find that position we're stable, then we're gonna go for that nice fly there, squeezing our back, back in again, then open up the hips. Same thing, go back down with that same leg, stable position, back nice and flat, go for that fly, back in again, and then stand all the way through. Notice my back leg was a little bit bent there, so try to keep that leg straight as well. It'll help with your balance, so bending over, keeping that leg nice and straight as best you can. Five, and then back up again. Eight on one side, then eight on the opposite side, guys. Once you're done with those flies, with one weight here, we're gonna go for another complex again. Front rack lunge plus a knee raise at the end. So we're gonna hold that uh, weight on that one side and we're gonna lunge with the opposite leg. So we can go for that reverse lunge. Legs going back here. Then we're gonna stand up through it and bring our knee as high as we can. Then go back to that neutral position. So again, front rack position, elbow nice and tall. We're gonna reverse lunge, keep that shin nice and vertical to the floor. Then I'm going to come up for that knee raise, then back to that neutral position. So when you do the opposite side switch and do the same thing, so again, go for that first lunge, staying tall, really trying to load the hamstring and the glute, then at the top, I'm going to go for that knee raise, and then back down again. So 10 and 10, 10 on the left leg, 10 on the right leg, and then we'll repeat those sets two more times to get ourselves ready for the workout. We'll see you guys next for the workout movements. For those double unders, we have them. Uh, let's work on those double unders today. If you're at that 30 range, for example, see if you can break them up into sets of 20. Um, or if you want to try it, seeing if you can do bigger sets today, this is a uh, great day to try and start, or a great workout to start doing that. If you don't have double unders, let's go single skips, or we can go for some running skips here, guys. Um, also, you can use that previous option from before, which is the double tap box. So, you're gonna keep the feet together, you're gonna jump up, double tap your sides for a 60 reps total. Starting with the alternating snatch. I got a dumbbell here, guys. So, depending what you have at home, your starting position might be slightly different, okay? So, what I'm getting at is if I have a smaller object, I might have to squat down to reach it versus leaning forward and rounding my back. That is usually your go-to more natural kind of lean forward, reach for it. But then that changes your spine position, does not keep it in neutral position. So try to get in the habit of hinging with the hips and squatting down if your object is a little bit smaller, okay? To avoid using your back or compromising your back position, use those legs. Just like any lift here that we would use with a barbell, you would deadlift it from the floor. From there, you guys, you're gonna drive your hips, heels into the floor as you drive your elbow slightly back, then quickly turn it around and punch it to the ceiling, okay? Avoid that two-step, because it's not a clean and press, it's a snatch, okay? So one fluid, continuous uh, movement all the way um, overhead. Team alternating jumping lunges. Now, for progression for your jumping lunges, start by a more controlled movement by lunging by backwards or forward. So, gain your balance, back knee straight to the floor to allow you to keep that chin in control versus having your knee over your toes. So, chin in control by being perpendicular to the floor, then going up, switching sides. This is again just a more controlled regular lunge. If you're ready to progress from there, what you can do is jump into your split position. So split position, slide down, come up, split position, go down, come up. It now becomes a more dynamic movement and you're not necessarily doing a full jumping lunge to control that knee position to not um, hurt those knees. That feel comfortable, you're ready to do more, go right into your jumping lunge where you have to start controlling your setting as you're jumping into it. Going for 15, hopefully you had a good workout, got that done under 15 minutes. Uh, now it's time to cool off and get some glute stretching and activation. So starting off with the pigeon uh, pose here, guys, we're gonna go for 60 seconds aside. 
You're actually gonna start in that high plank, so that push position. He's gonna drive his knee up towards his wrist. His heel is in line, in his case, in line with his um, knee. Now, if you don't have flexibility, that's fine. You can lower that heel down a bit. I know sometimes myself, if I have my heel a little higher, I create a little bit of impingement in my hip, so I gotta find that right position to not feel that impingement. So play around with it based on your flexibility. You're trying to stretch out the glute on that side. Two, you're also trying to stretch out your hip flexor by bringing your hip towards the floor or towards your heel. By doing that, you're again, you're stretching the hip flexor. You can get a little bit deeper in your stretch by dropping down towards your elbows or the floor, which again, it will intensify your stretch a little bit more. And if that's available to you, go right ahead. You're hanging out there for a minute total, so maybe you don't start there, you work up to that, okay? After you've done that for one minute, you're gonna do the other side for one minute, okay? Once you've completed both sides, then you're gonna go into your glute, hip stretch and activation. So find yourself a spot on the wall. You're gonna cross over. So one heel's on the wall. You're gonna cross over. Then you're gonna lower your hips down towards the floor. As you lower your hips down to the floor, you're stretching the glute there. So while you're stretching the glute, you're gonna create some activation. So what you wanna see today is you're gonna push your knee down towards the wall. Okay, which gets a little bit deeper stretch in your glute. Do that for about 10 seconds. Then you're gonna bring your knee in, where you gotta use your adductor to bring it up and in to activate that muscle. Hold that for about 10 seconds. You're gonna repeat that back and forth, back and forth, about 10 seconds each position for a total of one minute before you switch sides. So again, this is not just a, a stretch, you are stretching your glute, but you're also activating your adductor, which is gonna help those hips feel a lot better um, start off the week and from that workout, okay? Fun with this, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.